from gardening to animals to extreme renovations. Welcome to homesteading at College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Today we're bottling wine. Here is our uh, fermenter. I have a primary fermenter that I ferment my wine in. It's just a five gallon bucket. Show you that when we make wine. We'll be making choke cherry soon. Uh, and what I call choke cherry, it's actually autumn olive wine. But anyway, this is blackberry, I think. And we're gonna, uh, I'm pretty certain it's blackberry. We're gonna take this off. Now, before I use all these bottles to bottle this wine, what if it's bad? Well, that means you've got to taste it before you start. So what I'm going to do is uh, I've sterilized our little our little gadget here, and this is just a aluminum rod with a, a, a hose on it, and the hose is about an inch from the bottom because down here in the bottom of this is going to be all of the sediment, the dead yeast, any fruit pulp that was left over, which there shouldn't be much because this is the second. I had racked this twice. So, in other words, moved it from one container to another by siphoning. So, this is going to get siphoned off and put in uh, bottles today. But, I don't want to put it in bottles if it's bad. So, first thing you do is we take this off. Now, this is just a stopper, a number 10 stopper. Uh, with an airlock. I'd already poured, we keep uh, vodka in the airlock and that makes sure you can't get, it don't get bad. Okay, set this over here. Now, we're going to put our hose down in there. Get down in there. There we go. And it goes all the way to the bottom. There. That will allow us to siphon off a little bit of liquid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find out if this is any good or not. And how am I going to find out? Well, I'm going to taste test it. So, let's get this started. There it comes. And this is plum, by the way. It's too light to be blackberry. All right, now I've siphoned off just a little bit, raised my tube back up there. It's fairly clear. I'm right on the bottom though, I think. Mmm, that's good and strong. I always use wine. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. I always do my wine by uh, allowing the yeast to ferment to full. In other words, I want them to kill herself in alcohol content. So the alcohol content, this is not that namby-pamby stuff that you might buy at the store. Okay, This wine is going to be 12 to 18 percent alcohol content. Probably somewhere around 14 or 15. So that's just one of those things that this wine is not going to be the little 6% stuff like you buy. This is going to be the real stuff. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a bottle. And just so you can see, oh, I'm going to use a clear bottle. Here's a clear bottle. And then I'm going to put this right over in it. And what you want to happen, well, poo, I dropped it. What you want to happen is you don't want your wine to uh, just fall down in there. You want it to slowly run down the sides. Now, in order to do that, I have to move it down. So I'm going to show you what we do. Okay. Now, this, put it right here and let it fill. You can see it's running down the side here. See, pull it a little closer to you. See there? The wine is running down the side. 
that keeps it, if you let it splash down through there, it's going to oxidize. It's going to get a lot of oxygen in it. And we don't want a lot of oxygen in it. So I'm going to get ready with another. Oop, don't you come out of there. I'm going to get ready with another bottle. Do a little bigger bottle this time. <clears throat> and we just let that run. Now, it takes a while to fill one of these bottles. But once they're filled, then you can go on to the next step. And I'll show you what that is. Let me get this one filled. Now, one of these four-gallon Demijohns, like I say, gives me between 18 and 19 750 milliliter bottles. Uh, sometimes less, sometimes more. But, you know, you should always check and make sure everything's going good. You know? Mmm. That's pretty good. And I want to get this up into the, into the lid. And it takes a little while to do this. But the deal is, what you're not doing is you're not stirring up the sediment in the bottom of this demijohn. You don't want to do that. And you'll want your wine bottles below. So all I've got here is I've got a table, and then on the, under the table I've got a five-gallon bucket with the lid on, and that holds my wine bottles. And I said, like I say, they don't feel fast. Getting ready to transfer the liquid from one bottle to the next. Once it gets up here in the neck. All right. Now, I'm going to let this one run. That's a bottle. That's what it looks like. Okay. Now I'm going to stop this. I'm going to set it up here so that this will basically stop running. It'll run a little bit, but it'll run so slow that nothing will happen. And uh, I'll show you what we do with this bottle. Okay, folks. Well, apparently I lost the audio. So what we've got, we've got a 750 milliliter bottle. And I'm going to show you how you put the corks in. Now the corks have all been soaking. Uh, this is a cork inserter. It's been cleaned and all that. It's ready to go so that it's not going to make the corks nasty. And it's real simple. The cork goes in that hole and then you just put a cork in. There's no top or bottom to these corks. They're the same size. You put it on and you press it down. Normally I do this on the floor, but I'm doing it on the table here so you can see better. Uh, you just press it, press it, and press it, and finally it goes in. Now if you've done this right, the cork is all the way in, almost flush with the top of the bottle. And there it is. It makes a little dent in them sometimes. Sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it does. Depends on how hard you have to press, and every bottle is different. But you just want to leave a little bit of air in the top. You don't want to leave a lot of air, maybe half an inch. And that's the way you uh, cork these wine bottles. Okay, folks, our demijohn's empty. And here's what we wound up with. We've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. About 18 and a half uh, 750 milliliter bottles. So I'll show you what I do for the ones that we want to make presents out of. You saw what we had. We've got basically 18 bottles like, ah, like that. Now this is plum wine. Uh, it's about hmm, between 12 and 18 percent alcohol content. I don't measure it. I just know when my yeast die. Uh, it's not like the little stuff you buy. 
Now, I'm going to show you what we do when we go to give this as a present. Now, every bottle gets a label. I'm going to look for one. It's going to be easy to do while I'm doing the video. There we go. Every bottle gets a label. And on that label, it tells what it is. It says College Hill Farm, Plum 2018. So, we peel that off. And I buy these in uh, full sheets. That way I don't have to worry about making these labels on a specific label format. And we go ahead and we put the label on. Okay. So now it's got a nice label that lets you know where it's from, when it was made. Then when we want to give these as presents, we do a little extra thing. And uh, these are not expensive. Okay. You can buy a bunch of them for dang near nothing. And they're just little foil caps that go over and they sit right over like that. Now it doesn't look like that that's made for it. So it just comes on and off. Well the beautiful thing is you just take a little heat and this will adhere right down to the cap. So I'm going to do that now and I'm going to use my expensive heat gun which is Crystal's blow dryer. Uh, so we'll turn it on high heat and push it down all the way down on to the bottle. There. I didn't get it down good a while ago. Then you take the blow dryer. Hold that top down a little. And the heat. There it is, a present ready to go to a family or a friend. Uh, we like to take our wine when we go to visit somebody. We go to visit a friend, or if we go to visit, we like to take something with us. And homemade wine is something that uh, you just don't get everywhere. Uh, what have I got invested in this? Well, there's uh, 10 pounds, of sh 10 and a half pounds of sugar. There's uh, the plums, now I don't grow plums yet myself, so I pay about a dollar a pound. It takes about 20 pounds of plum to make that amount of wine. Uh, so when I when I get it all worked out, it's about $2 for a bottle of this size, which is 750 milliliters. It's about $2.35 to make that bottle of wine. Uh, that's if you get your friends to give you their wine bottles back. So the wine bottles don't cost anything. The corks, the labels cost, but when it's all said and done, it's about $2.35 a bottle. Folks, all bottled and labeled. These like this are for presents because they've got the fancy little top on them. These like this they're for drinking, cooking, what have you. Now, fruit wines. You should always drink your fruit wines within the year that you make them. Uh, it's not that they'll go bad, but they'll lose quality after a year. So you want to drink them in the year they were made. These were actually made, uh, finished back in October. So you go back. 90 days from that when they started so that takes us back to July so really these need to all be gone by July this year okay time to get on to the next thing if you like this homesteading kind of stuff be certain to subscribe and click the bell it'll let you know when our videos come out we upload new videos every Sunday